Hi, my name is Cameron Ledwidge, and this is a song I wrote called I'll Keep My Love. I'd sing when we were young, laugh when we were older, I'd hold you so close As the days they got colder, I'd carry you to bed when you'd had too much to drink And you'd make me laugh if I gave a cold shoulder and promised me love Till the day it was over, I wish that I'd said these words that were buried in my head Life could be so easy So let's run away I will hold on to you Will you hold on to me? I want all of the world And all of my world is you Let's play pretend and just keep on going, stay till the end We don't have to ignore that I want all of the world There's nothing that I wouldn't do So I'll keep my love for you And we dance in the kitchen to our favorite songs and we both do the dishes We were so strong and yeah, my love is forever And I want forever with you Life could be so easy So let's run away I will hold on to you Will you hold on to me? I want all of the world and all of my world is you Let's play pretend And just keep on going Stay till the end We don't have to ignore that I want all of the world There's nothing that I wouldn't do so I'll keep my love I'll keep my love, I'll keep my love, I'll keep my love I'll keep my love, I'll keep my love, I'll keep my love I'll keep my love, I'll keep my love, I'll keep my love I'll keep my love, I'll keep my love, I'll keep my love Life could be so easy, so let's run away I will hold on to you, will you hold on to me? I want all of the world, there's nothing that I wouldn't do I'll keep my love um, So I uh, grew up in a town called Denny. Um, was born, grew up like till eighteen, uh, until I moved for uni. Um, it's, it's just a typical small Scottish town. You've got lots of different characters. You've got that real sense of community where you could walk down the street and if you don't know someone, you'll say hello or whatever. It's 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 one of those places that. A lot of people can relate to you know you go out when you're younger play football on the streets play chappy all these things get a chase off, off of someone else it's just it's, it's those experiences that kind of turn you into the person you are and it's a town that you know i'll always call my home because it's went back to great grandparents just i'm kind of the first person to ever step out and move away for a bit um but you instantly kind of want to get back because it's what you're used to and it's what you love It's actually a daft reason why I got inspired by music. I kind of I, I played football at a young age, and my dad used to always like drive me to football. He'd play like Engelbert Humperdinck, Neil Diamond, like all the classics. Never really anybody that I sound like. Um, but it was actually 
I, I played a lot of Xbox and I had Guitar Hero. Uh, and I just always played Guitar Hero. And then one day I had the chance, it was through school and uh, it was like primary five and they were like, oh, uh, free guitar lessons. And they gave you a free guitar, like just kitted you out. Uh, and then obviously I signed up for it and my gran said to me, ah, you'll never stick at it. So she said, oh, for every year you play guitar, I'll give you a tenner. So for the last 10 or so years, I've been getting a tenner every year for my gran. Um, just wee things like that, they just, you know, music, it's a, it's a way of expressing emotions. And at that age, it was kind of just for the fun of it. And obviously, as I gradually got older, I'd write songs and I'd kind of put my feelings into songs and stuff because, you know, it's a way of expressing emotion. Uh, and then obviously when I was writing songs, playing the guitar and singing, I'd always had an interest in singing. From a young age, I'd kind of sing around the house. I'd have like a plastic guitar and microphone when I was like three. I'd sing Elvis because uh, that's what my grand loved. Uh, and then obviously through writing songs, there's only so much you can do with a guitar. So I taught myself how to play piano. Um, obviously wrote a few songs on the piano. It's usually quite different from guitar because it's, it's pretty basic, the piano. I just taught myself the basics. And from that, just, you know, kept writing songs and try to still kind of figure out styles and stuff. Obviously, I'm still maturing. I'm only 19, so just figuring it out. And, yeah, it's, it's an exciting journey. And obviously, it all started from kind of guitar hero and running about the house singing Elvis. This is a song I wrote called Strangers and it will be available on all streaming and music platforms very soon. I used to be your man But now I'm losing that feeling Trying to understand how I could stop all this bleeding Used to be friends but now we're losing touch Just one moment and I'm not good enough Sharing our stories as we both grew up Now that's not us We're just strangers Staring down this road we used to go to I've been searching for you, they search for me too Oh, we're just strangers Waiting on an antidote, my need a miracle I've been searching for you, they search for me too For me too Time seems to move so slow Since the day I left I don't feel nothing at all My hands are shaking and my breath feels so cold And now our stories will never be told Used to be friends but now we're losing touch Just one moment then I'm not good enough Sharing our stories as we both grew up now that's not us We're just strangers Staring down this road we used to go to I've been searching for you They search for me too Oh, we're just strangers Waiting on an antidote I need a miracle I've been searching for you They search for me too And though this road is so long But I'd follow this light Hope that one day I'll be back by your side Forget all the troubles and all of our fights Learn how to love and move on in our lives we're just strangers Staring down this road we used to go to I've been searching for you They search for me too oh, 
we just strangers waiting on an antidote might need a miracle i've been searching for you they search for me too for me too I started doing the voice journey when I was 17, like the first edition process, but then I turned 18 um, before my blind edition. So obviously, I, I think I was just, there was a few of us that were like 18, uh, well I think it was like a 17 year old as well. Um, but most of the time when I was there, the way that the kind of days worked, I was always the kind of the youngest person that was on set or in the studios and stuff. So it was an experience that I think I just had to jump into, um, don't get me wrong, it was terrifying, uh, obviously I, I, I always kind of doubted my ability when it came to music, uh, but I think like, like having that, you know, getting on these kind of shows, like you have to have a certain level of ability, and I think it gave me that bit of maybe I am actually alright at this, but also hearing all the other contestants that have been singing for 20 years, that have been doing it all their life, people that worked on Broadway, like worked alongside like mega stars. It, it, it was good to just sit back and listen to like, because I think these days we're so obsessed with like social media and stuff. So like we got put in a room where we had our phones taken off us because we weren't allowed to find out who was getting through at the time. So you actually had to talk to people and hear all like stories of people and like the music industry, because I'd kind of went in blind to the music industry. Um, had like I never had much experience. I think The Voice was my first ever gig. I'd actually not played a gig. So getting to hear all their stories about things they've done and like, you know, they've had records, labels, and then they got dropped and all their bad experiences, but then all their good experiences as well. It kind of opened my eyes to maybe what I wanted to do. And it's gave me more of an understanding of like you know where I want to get to as well. From the voice, you know, you've got the exposure. Um, some of it good, some of it bad. I think most most of it, ninety percent of it's good. You know, like people, like, I think the first time, I obviously been from a small town in Denny, like the first time I went outside after it aired on TV, everyone kind of just like, it was weird, like, it was good because people would be like, oh, like you were on the telly and that, but then it's also weird because like, you'd be walking and you'd feel people looking at you, and I didn't know whether to feel like comfortable or uncomfortable with it, because obviously it's great that people know about it, because, you know, you want to get that level of exposure that you're able to do it as a career, but then at the same time, you're like, oh, I, I feel a bit insecure right now. Does my hair look all right? Have, have I maybe got like a bit of toilet paper staying at the bottom of my pants? I don't know. Um, but no, it was mostly good. And obviously, being a student as well, like you'll go out in clubs and someone will be like, oh, you're on the voice. And then they'll go, oh, I'll buy you a drink. So it's like, it's, you know, it's good in that sense because money's tight at the moment. Um, but I think I think the worst part, there was, there was one, there was one thing that kind of like overshadowed all the good parts. It was like the week after. Um, obviously I'd been on the telly and you, uh, the follow went up like 3,000 in the space of like four hours from being like getting through so it, it was quite a rapid growth um, lots of good messages people saying it was good but um, there's obviously the flip side like people making fake accounts of me and there was one in particular that had the username Cameron Led would you kill yourself and obviously being 18 and like just kind of like phew, I was just doing this because it's something I love and it just kind of, it took that, like, kind of step back and go, right, this is actually what fame is like. Um, but I kind of, like, obviously, I tried to not let it affect me. Like, I kind of let it bother me for half an hour and I thought, right, okay, whatever. Like, if that's what fame is, um, you know, you're going to get that. So it was like, right, well, if I experience it just now, and in the future, if something does happen, you know, then at least I know what it feels like. But obviously, it's never a nice feeling. Um, but you kind of get past that and see all the, the good comments and people saying, oh, you're amazing. Or, oh, I loved what you did here. I love the way you come across. I love how you can openly talk about things. All this stuff. And then, so from that, I kind of, I posted on my Instagram. Like, I made a, like, 
mental health close friends group. Um, just where I'd talk about my day and I'd give like an option at the bottom of the page where you could like add a question, but from that question, they were able to put how their day was and how they felt. So it kind of started a little community of kind of opening up and like being op- like honest with each other. Um, obviously that was always kept between me and whoever I was messaging. But that kind of helped me as well because, um, you know, you're getting to openly discuss your life but I'm getting to discuss mine. So just kind of shows that from that bad experience of, you know, someone saying something on social media, it also helped me and other people as well. So I, I, I try, always try and take the positive from things. Um, this is a cover of a very famous woman. It's back to black and uh, I've put my own twist on it so hopefully I don't ruin it for everybody. So this is back to black. He left no time to regret Kept his dick wet With his same old safe bed Me in my head high In my teeth dry Get on without my guy. You went back to what you knew So far removed from all that we went through And I tread the troubled track My odds are stuck and I'll go back to blind We only say goodbye with words I died a hundred times You go back to heart and I you go back to We only say goodbye with words I died a hundred times You go back to her and I You go back to us I love you so much It's not enough You love blow and I love Puffin life like a pie and I'm a tiny penny rolling up the walls inside we only say goodbye with words I died a hundred times you go back to her and I you go back we only say goodbye with words I died a hundred times You go back to her and I you go back to I go back to blind 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 Black, black, black. We only say goodbye with words. I died a hundred times. You go back to her and I. You go. We only say goodbye with words I died a hundred times You go back to her and I You go back to We only say goodbye with words I died a hundred times You go back to her and I died a hundred times You go back
back to her and I go back to I go back to black. Yeah, I think mental health is always important. Um, I, as a young child, I went through, like, well, a young teen even, I went through quite a lot of change, uh, a, quick, a quick period of time, uh, which obviously causes effects, like, as you get older, like, going through puberty, it was, like, it was always in the back of your mind. Um, so, obviously, I had, like, troubles with anxiety and, like, mood swings and, like, feeling down and stuff. So, like, music was always that kind of escape. And a lot of people will say this, like, musician, m most musicians use their songs as a escape, a way to tell stories. And most of the songs I write will have an underlying theme um, or meaning to it. So quite a lot of the, the songs that I write and release are, are often personal or, you know, obviously speaking to friends and family, like just them talking about their worries as well. It's, it's often easy to put in a song and kind of allow people to relate because most people will have mental health problems at one point in their life. I think having that way of listening to someone else uh, with the same experiences, you'd feel less alone because you can often feel quite alone with mental health, but knowing that someone else has maybe felt the same gives that kind of way of knowing, well, if they've managed to conquer it, then so can I. Um, and obviously, through mental health, uh, I've obviously uh, released a song sometimes in love, which I think you've heard uh, on this, uh, this interview so far. Um, and I donated all the money from that to Scottish Association of Mental Health. Uh, I think I raised like 100 for that one. And then I also donated like my first ever song that I released. It was about my mental health. It was called Another Day. Um, I released it in January 2020. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, I donated that to Falkirk District Association of Mental Health. And I never really thought anything of releasing a song for the first time. I, I'd recorded it in my bedroom. Uh, like done all the vocals, done all the editing. Like the quality's not the best. I think I'm actually going to redo it and maybe master it because it is a very meaningful song, and it kind of goes through like when I was at like I felt my lowest. So I thought it was fitting to you know I released it on all the music platforms and iTunes, and I didn't really expect much of it. Uh, I said that I was donating all the money to Falkirk District Mental Health, and it managed to get to something like forty two in the iTunes charts. I remember thinking, how's that happened? Because I was just like a 17-year-old still at school. <coughs> it was just the whole community, like Denny, Falkirk, Bridge, all these places that I was from, people buying it and sharing it everywhere, and it was just kind of like, wow. I, kinda, I had that first taste of what life could be like and that excitement of it. But yeah, it's just, I feel like mental health is like something that's very current. And if I can write a song that makes someone feel safer or less alone, then I'm definitely going to do that and that's kind of what I aim to do like as I got my wrist be kind I, I'm always like looking to make like not uh, inspire is not the right word but I uh, mentor or like to make sure people know that it's okay to talk because it is um, and as I said be kind it's something that I just said in a video once because like you never know what's going on in someone's head you can be the happiest person outside maybe on the inside you're not so yeah, just be kind and, you know, hopefully everyone can do well and be happy. As I mentioned, uh, The Voice was my first ever gig and that was like last October, so October 2020. Um, my aims for music was to focus on schoolwork, um, finish sixth year, which was March, well, I got cut short because of COVID, so it's March 2020, we got kicked out of school. Um, my plans was that as soon as six year was over, I'd get my head stuck right into music, I'd start playing live, I'd do all these gigs, I'd try and get the field, and then obviously COVID came along, kind of cut that idea out of the way. So when The Voice happened, it was kind of all like gung, gung ho, like just go for it. Uh, obviously that was my, my first gig. I'd never really played live apart from the odd, like, Denny Town Centre, I played the Denny Town Centre opening, got asked by a council member that I knew to, to play it, uh, can't say my voice was very strong at that point, uh, I was like 15, I played like the Denny Gala days and stuff, so nothing like too big, it was just kind of playing in front of the community and people that I knew, um, and then 
as of I think I, I tried to I'd booked a headline gig for December 2020 which got cancelled with Covid and then I booked one for August 2020 uh, was it, no, it was, oh, it was supposed to be August 2020, and then I got cancelled, then I got moved to December 2020, and I got cancelled. Uh, so that was all through a promoter that I'd started, like, kind of getting, like, like this, they caught an eye of me on social media, because it, it, that's kind of where I was based. I'd only ever posted on social media, uh, like, covers and my originals. And he, um, I called Sucker, I was down in, down in England, and he kind of just, like, took me under the wing got me these opportunities and then I had my first proper live gig uh, in Newcastle. Um, it was a support gig uh, with a band called Rest who are actually very, very good in, uh, in Scotland. Uh, I was just kind of like, well, I was at work on the Thursday uh, and I was just about to start. It was like one fifty. I was just swiping it too and I got an email being like, how would you like to go down to Newcastle tomorrow and play a gig? And I was like, yes. Um, first gig ever and I'm playing in Newcastle uh, so I went down to Newcastle played this gig and then I got a text that night saying that on like on the Saturday someone had to pull out of a gig because of Covid at Sneaky Pete's it was supporting white novels um, so they were like oh you want to come play I was like well I've already got a set because I've played this gig tonight so I was like yeah so I I'd never played a gig and I'd had two gigs in the space of two days that wasn't supposed to happen. I was already lined up to support Josh Grant at the Mash House. It was a sold out Mash House. Well, no, no, it wasn't sold out, sorry. It was almost sold out. So I'd already had that lined up. I had like 40 of my family and friends like sold tickets for to come. Um, so I'd had a set and I'd played these two gigs and then I kind of was like, I got the taste for it and I was like, wow. I was like, I'm ready for this Mash House gig now. So... I went to the Mash House, uh, supporting Josh Grant, and it was incredible. I, like, like that feeling of like being on stage with like people singing your songs back. I was kind of like, I want this feeling more. Um, for sometimes in love, I asked the audience to put the torches up, and I kind of like it caught me off guard. Like I'm, I'm, I'm quite an emotional person inside, but I can't really express it on the outside. But it's the first time I kind of thought, whoa, I could feel a tear running down my cheek, kind of thing, because it was like. 80 people holding their torches up singing my song but I just kind of thought wow I was like I want to be doing this on a big scale like because yeah these small venues are are great because you can really connect with an audience but you're like oh I just want thousands of people singing my song back and I think it's one of those ones where you've always got to have good ambition but you've also got to be realistic so like right now I obviously I've got my headline gig December 19th at Sneaky Pete so that's like kind of my first my first ambition was to to get a headline gig, sell it out. Hopefully, um, I'm hoping to do that. Obviously, with all all the opportunities that will hopefully come up. Um, but yeah, like the, the usual ones, like sell out King Tuts. Um, Saint Luke's is up and coming as well. I've I seen Lewis Capaldi play there when I was like 15 before he took off and took over the world. So p playing all these venues that I've went and watched people at. I, I, I think that's something that all Scottish musicians want to do is like you'll go and see someone that you love at a gig and you'll be like I want to play here like I can't I can't go to a gig now and not want to be on stage so I was at this gig the other week and I was watching it and I was like oh, I wish I was getting on stage but you can't because you need to watch it and you're like oh it's just it's all that you kind of think about um because once you experience that feeling of it it's hard not to want it more um, but yeah, I'd, I'd also like to, you know, tour the UK, I think, but with the voice and stuff, all my followers aren't in like one area, so they're all kind of spread out across the UK, so like all these people that I've bought, like I, I released CDs and I was sending CDs to like Southampton, London, so two went, one went to America, one went to Canada, it was completely mental, so like playing in all these different places and meeting people that have supported me through social media, cause I've done it for years, I've done social media for years and hope to kind of get seen and obviously these people that have spoke to me and followed me from when my voice was horrible and my songs weren't as good um but yeah it'd just be nice to like meet meet people i think that's kind of what i like about music is you meet people and you get to talk about anything and i like talking <laughs> i like talking a lot 
So my name is Cameron Weather, this is my last song. It is a song I wrote and recorded during lockdown last year and it managed to get to number 11 in the Scottish charts and it's called Sometimes In Love. So if you do like it, please type it up, listen to it and help a boy out. So this is Sometimes In Love. One last touch before I give this all up And I know it scared me to think about you in somebody's arms And those three words that we would always say Are fading away and slipping away off of my tongue But I'll always remember the people that we used to be Sometimes in love we get lost And sometimes in love we can find That the truth in our hearts is never the same in our minds It's never the same Sometimes in love we feel whole And sometimes in love we feel nothing at all But I'll wait Yes, I'll wait Oh, I'll wait For one last kiss I promise I'll make it a good one Cause it's the last one that we will ever know And those three words that we would say Too much have faded away And slipped away out of my mouth But I'll always remember way that you held on to me Sometimes in love we get lost And sometimes in love we can find That the truth in our hearts is never the same in our minds It's never the same in our Sometimes in love we feel whole and sometimes in love we feel nothing at all But I'll wait, yes I'll wait, oh I'll wait Sometimes in love we can lose And sometimes in love we can feel like we used So I'll walk, walk away, walk away In these last words I never thought I would say But I'll walk away I'll walk away I'll walk away